Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny and this is Unsung Season 13 and this episode was about Regina Bell. I have to say, Regina Bell is probably one of my favorite vocalists, you know, of all time. You know, a powerhouse singer. You know, I'm a, I'm a singer too, so she was definitely one of my inspirations. I loved her voice. Actually, my favorite song from her is Make It Like It Was. Love that track. And it always, you know, at one point it used to make me emotional when I would hear it. You know, because it was, she, she really, her voice is just phenomenal. You know, you know, we remember her from, you know, like from tracks like Baby Come To Me, Show Me The Way, um, uh, you know, If I Could, you know, um, you know, A Whole New World, a duet she did with um, Peebo Bryson, which actually won her a Grammy, you know, just a fun, just a powerhouse vocalist. And, you know, she's definitely one of those vocalists that can do jazz, gospel and R&B, you know. And um, they, sh you know, they talk about her coming from um, Inglewood, New Jersey. She came from a very strong family. You know, music and church was definitely a part of her upbringing, you know. And, um, but she said that she also had a big love for R&B. You know, she would listen, she would listen to, you know, the Emotions and the Jones Girls. Definitely two girl groups that I love. So she definitely had a good air. And she also talked about how she was really into music in school and that she actually played the tumba in the marching band. And she said people used to crack on about it, but she said she didn't care because she was doing what she loved, you know. And um, she ended up getting in, um, she ended up, you know, getting accepted into Rutgers University at the age of 18. Um, and, you know, she ended up becoming, I think she was um, the president of the African um, Student Congress. And they will hold shows, and she brought in Phyllis Hyman, Ashford and Simpson, and people Bryson. You know, people that she was fans with, who will later on in life become her commentaries, and she will perform. You know, you know, and she would have you know, you know, um, shows where she would be booked in the same. You know, she would be booked with you know Phyllis Hyman and you know Ashford and Simpson and all of that, and end up you know doing a duet with people Bryson. But she said that look. I'm going to let y'all know, Rutgers University, I brought the artists that I liked. So, <laughs> she let it be known. The artists that I brought to the school were artists that I liked. You know, and, you know, she, you know, was honing her, her talent as well as, you know, um, as well as, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what she really wanted to do. Because at her senior year, the year that she was supposed to graduate, she had no idea what she wanted to do. She had no idea what her plan, she had no plan as to what she was going to do after graduation. And enters, you know, Gerald Alston from the Manhattans. Um, you know, so she, she ends up leaving her senior year and she didn't graduate, but she left. And she decided to pursue her dream. Her father wasn't, I think, wasn't really for her doing it. But her mom was like, girl, go ahead and do what you got to do, you know fight for your dream so she did and um she was actually on the song with the manhattans um where her and gerald pretty much were singing lead um it was it was released in 1986 it was called um where did we go wrong and trust regina sung her face off on that song yes she delivered and delivered so well that columbia records made a deal without even meeting her they just heard the track and they wanted to cut a deal with that vocalist so here it is that was that was god that was nothing but god you know when god has when god has um a destiny designed for you it's gonna happen and that is a very rare instinct like she didn't even have a portfolio she didn't even have, she never even actually sat down in a meeting where someone was pitching her to these executives. They heard her and they wanted to cut a deal with her. And literally, they made a deal with her over the phone. Which is everything. So, 
1987, they she did her debut album, All By Myself, which had the timeless track, Show Me The Way, which went to number two on the R&B charts. And you had people like People Bryson, people Bryson Lettucey, um, you know, who were commentators on this episode as well. Um, but then again, even though she had this hit song, you know, the money wasn't there, you know, because she said that she was only making enough money to pay the band, you know, and she even said that, you know, while she was on tour, there was an eviction notice on her door. So she, what she would do is that after the tour was over, she would literally do session work and she ended up getting some, some session work in, um, I think in, um, you know, in the village, you know, in New York. And she said that that's how she literally paid for, that's how she was able to maintain herself for a whole year after having a hit record. So, even though she had a hit record, she did, there was not a lot of money that was being generated. So, she, she, she had to hustle. But she did what she had to do because she loved, she, she knew what she wanted and she knew that this was her calling and her purpose. So she went through what she had to go through to get to that next step. Because the second album is what really set her up for, you know, because that second album, you know, um, Stay With Me, had one of her biggest hits, um, Baby Come To Me, which went number one on the R&B charts. Um, also, my favorite song, Make It Like It Was. You know, I love that song. Make it like it was the way it used to be. I'm like, ooh, I just love how the way she delivers that song. And that also went um, number one on the R&B charts as well. And that album went gold. And I remember hearing, you know, Baby Come To Me and Make It Like It Was. That was always on the radio when I was a little boy. So she's definitely an act that I literally grew up with as well. And definitely had nothing but utmost respect and admiration for her for, for, for her personality as well as her talent. Um, and she even talks about she had like some felt felt she had a failed first marriage. Um, she had a bad relationship that made her drink. But then she said while she was she she said that she had got a whole bottle of Hennessy and was literally drinking this whole bottle and wasn't feeling anything. But then she said God spoke to her and she realized that this is not for her and that she needs to keep moving forward and she said that she ain't never drank ever she never drank or did anything since then because she, she she said god's voice told her that you know the way you're going this is going to lead to stronger stuff and he says and god was like look i ain't come this far with you to just throw it away but um we see that she actually rekindles with um john battle you know, someone that she he went to Rutgers University with her. They were friends for years, and then they um, and I think he was also he also played basketball when he was at Rutgers as well. And they ended up falling in love. They ended up getting married in '91. They're still married to this day with five children. Um, she even talks about her struggles on having a baby because she had a miscarriage. Um, she had twin boys that you know that sadly she she didn't carry full um, she didn't carry full to term. But um, but they had actually adopted three kids. But she wanted to have a child of her own, and finally, um, she had two daughters. Um, so and um, it was also in '92 was when she does um a whole new world, which was from the um from the Disney movie Aladdin, um. And she did the song with People Bryson, and they sung their faces off of it. And that's that's definitely a. I, I definitely remember their version, and I used to love their version. I mean, cause People Bryson definitely was doing was doing a lot of remake of some of these Disney classics, cause he had did Beauty and the Beast with Celine Dion, and then now he was doing a whole new world with Regina Bell, and you know they won a Grammy, so the song was amazing, and. Just seeing her vocal, her vocal apparatus in that song just blew me away. Like Regina Bell is definitely a voice that 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 literally gets your attention on command, and it's just a God-given talent. 
But then she kind of joked about how her grandma still kept her down to earth, even after her winning the Grammy. She was like, um, she was like, go in there and do them dishes. She's like, but grandma, I got a, um, I have a show. She's like, okay, well, I'm going to tell you what, since you got a show, put on that apron so you don't, so you don't, um, mess up your pity dress. And get in there and do them dishes. <laughs> and she just cracked up at it. I was like, but well, that's real though, because, you know, grandma's like, no matter if you a big star or not, you still my grandbaby and don't forget where you come from. So she learned early on to not, to not believe her hype. You know, like, yeah, you have this great career, but don't lose yourself in it. And then due to the fact that she actually had a good Christian upbringing, that kept her grounded, too. And then um, her fourth album, she didn't have any hits. And because of that, Columbia, you know, dropped her. Um, but yet she continued to perform, you know, and continued to do what she and, and continue to um, to live her life. And um all of a sudden, um, we see in 2008, she decides to do a gospel album, which surprised a lot of us, you know, because we known her as an R&B singer, you know, and now she's doing a gospel album, but, um, she, but then I have to say, I remember, because at the time I was living in North Carolina when, um, this album came out, and I remember the song, God is Good, was always on the radio you know and that song went to number two on the gospel charts number one was um never would have made it without you by marvin Sapp, but she was number two and i remember there was not a time i didn't turn on the gospel radio station and i didn't hear that song i mean they played that song out and i even went to church and different churches and i even seen girls you know sing that song you know and she even said that, you know, her brother Bernard um, was was the one who was collaborating with her on 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 the album, and he was saying that where's that song? You know, that song, you know, with the hand claps and the foot stomp. You know, like like those down home churches. You know, southern churches. You know, where you ain't have no instruments, so the hand claps and the stomp is what kept you on beat. We ain't got no song like that. But he's like, I'm gonna create one. She said her brother wrote that song in 15 minutes. And the song was just amazing. And, you know, I had to even say it blew my mind to how big that song became. And I was like, oh my God, Regina Bell. And I was just like, shoot, I could never forget Regina. But to see her in this new light was great. And, um, but, and, and she had a great rise from that. But then a year later, she while she was on tour she was diagnosed with a brain tumor and it was a very scary time for her you know she was near death um but then the tumor the tumor was benign but then she but then for for a while it took her a while to get back to where she to where she it, it took her a while to get to for her to get back to health because it was it was a process and she even talked about having vertigo and Definitely, um, my brother suffers from it, so I know vertigo can be very paralyzing. And, you know, she even said that she even had problems, you know, that, you know, even with drinking water, she would regurgitate. You know, so she really went through a serious health scare, and it took her a while to get back. You know, that they, they did operate on the tumor, and the tumor was benign, so that was great. But then she said that God is good after going through all of that became her mantra and that she says that no matter no matter what I go through I know that God is good and I know that that is true and you know now um, you know she's still performing she not too long um, I think like a few years ago she did her she did another R&B album probably her first R&B album in like 15 or 15 years um, you know she also did another gospel album and um also her husband john john battle he's a he's a minister and they they pretty much minister at two different churches so she's a first lady but she still you know is you know singing with the choir and she still sings solos and you know she's still doing her thing and 
And she pretty much, one of the things that she mentions in this episode is that we're not here just for us. We're here to, to leave a mark that's going to help somebody else that we're probably never even going to meet in our lifetime. And I thought that was very powerful and a, and a great way to think about it because that's exactly how I think about my life too is that I really want to leave my mark in this world so that future generations will be able to benefit from some of the great things that I that I will do in my life because I'm 35 so I still got a I still got some time you know God willing and um, and definitely um, I also rem I also remember the song God is good that definitely that definitely showed bad memories for me because um I recently my grandmother passed away and my grandmother loved gospel music and I remember every time that song came on my grandmother would get into her thing and you know God is good and would just get into it you know she she loved that song so definitely you know when she talks about that memory talks about the song God is good that definitely took back memories with my grandmother because my grandmother was a minister and she and when I remember when we lived in, in Durham North Carolina all she did was listen to gospel music you know on the radio station and you better not touch that dial or she will hurt you so it stayed on the gospel station and um she definitely loved the song god is good so and she would always you know she would she would she would get and she would get into the spirit and everything and be like yes hallelujah because he is good you know and i know that that he's good even for me because you know i was blessed which with the wealth of a grandmother I was blessed with musical talent I was also blessed with a platform that I'm that I'm now building you know to actually create a better life for me and my family so at the end of the day yeah you always got the you know give thanks to the almighty because he's always there but yes I truly love this episode you know definitely listening to all of the songs you know cuz because, I, I, like, Regina Bell was definitely one of those artists that were a part of my upbringing, just like 702 and so many other artists. Because I was definitely, I, I consider myself somewhat of an old soul because I loved music before my time. And I would listen, I would listen to that music like if it was, as if it was current, you know. And the thing about it, classics never go out of style. Because at the end of the day, everybody's going to be old school. So... <laughs> And, and so, at the end of the day, you know, never never get rid of the classics because the classics set the stage for the new things that are coming out. I mean, you know, when I think of Lettucey, she's definitely an offshoot of Regina Bell. Absolutely. You know, I even think of, you know, artists like, um, you know, like even Beyonce, another offshoot. You know, Regina Bell paved the way for... You know, a lot of these powerhouse vocalists that we have today are Marsha Abrocious, another one. You know, because Regina's voice is still a powerful force to this day. And I wish her nothing but the best. And I know God ain't done with Regina Bell. Because I'm definitely not done with her either. Because I'm, 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 I'm definitely here for anything Regina Bell do. I'm here for anything that Regina Bell does you know from this point on you know because I love that voice and that voice is timeless so um that's what I have everybody um if I missed anything put it down in the comments or if it's something that stood out for you in this episode please definitely put it down there I love it I love to talk to you about it but um subscribe 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 to my channel click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video also, follow me on all of my social platforms. I have them all listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I'll be back with the next episode of Unsung right here on KRS-TV. So until next time, everybody, take care.